Membranes separate internal and external environments and are selectively permeable. Cell walls contain unique complex carbohydrates in plants, prokaryotes, and fungi. So when we think about selective permeability, we want to keep things that we want inside and keep things outside that we want to keep outside. So when we start looking at individual molecules, they can be large, like large macro molecules. A lot of times there will be some polarity to these large macro molecules, but large molecules cannot get through the lipid bilayer. Charge molecules, because of their charge, also cannot get through the nonpolar hydrophobic core of the lipid bilayer. Water. Water is small, but it is polar. So some of it can get through, but typically to move in large amounts, we need aquaporin channels. The molecules that have free range to passively transport on their own have to be small and nonpolar, which include oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. Now, when we talk about cell walls, we're going to talk about bacteria, fungi, and plants. Fungi, we usually think of mushrooms, but we also have mold and yeast. We can have corn smut and the type of fungus that causes cause Dutch Elms disease. We also have ringworm. White nose syndrome in bats is caused by fungi. Lichen form a symbiotic relationship with algae, or lichen are a symbiotic relationship with algae with fungi. And 90% of all terrestrial plants contain mycorrhizae, where fungi interact with cell with plant cell root hairs. But all of these different types of fungi all have the same type of carbohydrate in their cell walls, which is chitin. And chitin is the same thing found in the exoskeleton of lobsters. When we start talking about bacteria, we need to talk about peptidoglycan. And peptidoglycan is a carbohydrate mixed with protein um, peptide chains. So as we look at this, we have a bacterial cell wall. Again, all of these organisms still have their lipid bilayer, but in addition to that, bacteria are also going to have a cell wall, and then they'll be surrounded in some type of capsule. When we distinguish between the different types of bacteria, we can have gram-positive and gram-negative. So when they're stained, they might be purple or pink, and that has to do with how much peptidoglycan is in their cell walls. Thick layers of peptidoglycan will stain purple, and those will be gram-positive. Gram-negative bacteria have thin layers of peptidoglycan, and most dangerous pathogenic bacteria are going to be gram-negative. When we start thinking about these glycan chains and the peptides that hang off of them, we use antibiotics typically to attack the peptidoglycan, in this case, vancomycin, and in this case, penicillin. We start thinking about plants, the carbohydrate in their cell walls is cellulose. Cell walls are important for barriers, and they keep affect the permeability of cells. And in this case, there are even um, channels evolved into certain cell walls called plasmodesmata within plants. Cell walls also are important for structural boundaries. If we took an animal cell and a plant cell and put them in hypotonic environments or even pure water, uh, animal cell would lice or burst, whereas that structural boundary provided by the cellulose within the cell walls of plants allow pressure to build up, but the cell wall and the cell stays intact and alive. So there is important permeability things to understand about membranes, which things can go in, what things can go out, which things need protein channels to help them through. But then cell walls have complex carbohydrates found in plants, 
bacteria, and fungi.